Juan and Rachel Kim, Governor Gavin Newsom is speaking right now with LA Mayor Karen Bass about his plan to bolster TV and film production here in Hollywood. California's Let's listen entertainment in. industry. A milestone brought forth by Governor Gavin Newsom, whose bold leadership and strategic vision for California continue to support our status as a global center for film and television production. To our labor partners, thank you so much for advocating for our workforce and working tirelessly to ensure a strong future for all entertainment industry members. <laughs> to our studio partners, we're grateful for the exceptional content you bring to life, for working with us to ensure California is a thriving hub for content creation. And to the California Film Commission Board, thank you for your steadfast dedication and strategic insight, which helped drive our programs forward and support our industry's growth. Our training providers, your work is essential in preparing the next generation of Californians talent, ensuring we have a skilled and diverse workforce. Our regional film officers, we thank you, our partners. Your local expertise and support are vital in connecting productions to communities across the state, extending our industry's impact far and wide. And to our legislative partners, we deeply appreciate your support for the Film and Television Tax Credit Program which fuels California's industry growth and ensures a competitive edge for our state. Each one of you plays a critical role in supporting and strengthening California's film and television industry. Thank you all for joining us today and thank you all for your ongoing partnership. And now it is my pleasure to invite to the podium Brigitta Romanoff. Thank you, Colleen. Good afternoon. I'm very excited to be here today. My name is Brigitta Romanov. I'm the executive director of the Costume Designers Guild, IATSE Local 892. I also serve on the board of the California IATSE Council, representing over 54,000 behind the camera workers in California. Film and television are a unique art form brought to life by hundreds of skilled craftspersons, telling stories that captivate audiences worldwide. For over a century, our members have not only built careers in California, but have also powered local economies with their film-related spending. Most industries have felt the impact from automotive to fuel, large retail to small businesses. When, ca when California thrives, they thrive. Our members have been fundamental in building this industry, establishing California as a top tier destination. For over 20 years, I've been immersed in the art of storytelling as an IATSE costume designer. Costumes take on a life of their own for the audience, keeping their existence alive long after the screen fades and the credit rolls. This job was never this was never just a job for me, it was a passion. Sadly, film and television workers who once flourished in this industry now face a dire situation. California struggles to compete for production work because so many of us live here. The impact is larger than anywhere else in the world, leaving thousands of IATSC members without work. So far in 2024, now you get the statistics, the Motion Picture Industry Pension and Health Plan, which ensures health care and retirement for our freelance members, is projected to fall nearly 40 million hours short of 2022 levels. This staggering deficit translates to over 20,000 jobs lost in the crafts alone, resulting in over a $2 billion gap in just lost wages. Meanwhile, our long-standing vendors, costume houses and prop shops dating back to the 
Dawn of Cinema, dry cleaners, department stores, and hundreds of other businesses are struggling to survive or have shut down forever. Other states and countries through tax credits are aggressively pursuing our jobs and they are succeeding. We're at risk of losing the industry entirely. California is synonymous with the film industry from the beautiful mountains to the north and the shining beautiful beaches to the south. Filming needs to stay here. On behalf of the IATSC 54,000 California members, we thank Governor Newsom for standing with us. His actions today address the economic pain and suffering of our members, recognize the importance of protecting California's economy past, present, and into the future. Governor Newsom knows that when we outsource California's jobs, we outsource California's future and surrender our success. These tax incentives are a lifeline to California's entertainment workers, their families, and our entire economy. Without them, California's filming reign will just be consigned to history. Thank you. It will now be my pleasure to in introduce Millicent Shelton. As Brigitte said, hello, my name is Millicent Shelton, and I am a member of the Directors Guild of America. I serve as fifth vice president on our national board. We represent over 19,000 directors and their teams, which include assistant directors, associate directors, unit production managers, and stage managers. The majority of our members live in California. The DGA is also one of the founding members of the Entertainment Union Coalition, which since its inception has been focused on and dedicated to keeping film and television production in California. Most recently working to extend the existing tax credit for an additional five years. I have been a director for 34 years, starting in music videos, then transitioning to working on over 100 episodes of television. I moved to California in 1996 to work in television because at that time, everyone knew that if you had the desire, the talent, and the skill to work in the entertainment industry, then California was the place to be. Now we're fighting to make sure the next generation of young people seeking to fulfill their dream of building a career in the entertainment industry will continue to be able to do so in California. I'm currently working on the morning show, which means I'm one of the lucky ones because it shoots here in Los Angeles. And let me tell you, I had to look really hard and fight for that episode. But many directors are being forced to leave California and often the country for work to repeatedly make the hard choice between work and home is psychologically painful and damaging to marriages, families, and communities. I know because I traveled the entire 16 years of my twins' lives. Work can and should be available where we live, especially when we live in the birthplace of the film and television industry. Thousands of DGA members live in California. They buy homes, raise children, volunteer in their communities, and pay taxes. They also shop in local stores, eat in restaurants, support public schools, and mentor young people. They participate in the civic life of our cities and our state. Our members, along with the larger film and television community, are a significant part of why California boasts the fifth largest economy in the world. Our California entertainment industry is under tremendous pressure right now. From budgetary consolid consolidation, I knew I was not gonna get that word. <laughs> Technology growth and competition. As film and television incentives expand and increase around the world, we are witnessing work in LA dramatically dropping by over 40%. With his announcement today, Governor Newsom has taken bold and decisive action, stepping forward on behalf of the creators, craftspeople, actors, and small business owners who depend upon this industry for their livelihood. The Directors Guild thanks Governor Newsom for taking our plight seriously and for recognizing the value our work brings to this state by protecting the iconic place the film and television industry holds in California. On behalf of the DGA and all of the people who are part of our vibrant and resilient creative industry, we thank you 
for this evidence of California's commitment to our future. And now I'd like to introduce Alex Aguilar. Good afternoon. My name is Alex Aguilar. I'm the business manager for Layuna Local 724. I've been a member of the laborers for nearly 30 years. Those 30 years I've spent them working in the entertainment industry. It's been great. It's, it's been great up until lately. <laughs> the past few years have been rough. And I know, I know a lot of us know what, what we've been through. Um, you know, for me in particular, I get calls from members. Some of these members are not just members to me. They're family, they're friends, they're neighbors. And let me tell you what some of these calls sound like or what they're like. They tell me I'm being evicted from my apartment. I'm losing my home. I'm losing my insurance. Those are the type of stories and calls that I get and have been receiving for the past few months. And frankly, you know, it's been rough. It's been rough. It's been hard. This industry, our members, the, the, you know, IATSE, Teamsters, laborers, IBW, plasters, we and our members are very dependent on this industry. They buy homes. They think of the middle class goal and that dream of buying a home and staying in California where we were all raised and where we live. And unfortunately, these past few months and, and years, we've seen members move relocate to other states, Texas, Atlanta, New Mexico. This is not what California should be like. California is the heartbeat of the entertainment industry. Los Angeles, Hollywood is the heartbeat of the entertainment industry, and it needs to remain that way. And so today, I want to thank the governor for his efforts in pushing this through, because it couldn't come at a more crucial time. It's, it's, it, I just, I can't get into it enough. I can talk about it for hours, but what I'm telling you is this is very important to the members, to the people of LA, to the people of California, to the families that look like me, that look like some of the folks. We all have members here today standing behind me, and this is what our membership looks like. These are the people that we need to keep working, the families that need to keep staying here in California. So um, that's, that's my spiel for today. Um, I thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Governor. Thank you to the mayor. And um, thank you for your hard work and let's get this done. And now I have the pleasure of introducing our mayor, Karen Bass. Thank you, Alex. I think you described it so well. We have to do everything we can to strengthen and protect one of the foundational pillars of our economy in Los Angeles. And as he mentioned, this industry touches so many people in our city in so many different ways. Tens of thousands of Angelinos working in the industry, actors, directors, writers, stagehands, and more. But it's also about all of the businesses that are often not talked about, the ancillary businesses that benefit from the entertainment industry. Whether you're talking about the flower shops, the restaurants, just thousands of businesses that participate either directly are indirectly. And one message we want to send from the mayor's office is we have your back. We watched the industry go through tough times through the pandemic. We watched tough times through the strikes. We were hoping that everything would get right back to normal, but that's not the way it has happened. When I was in the state assembly in 2009, we saw the need to ensure that the entertainment industry thrived. During those years, the industry was beginning to slip away and beginning to go to other states. But since then, many of those states have developed their own industries, and that has really impacted us. I served with now Senator Portentino and, uh, a, well, now current Congress member Paul Krikorian, and we got the first tax credits in the budget. 
But now and over the years, the tax credits grew bit by bit. But I really want to congratulate and thank the governor for his leadership in making a huge difference, not just increasing the tax credits a little bit, but finally and hopefully making us competitive with New York, <laughs> with the state of Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> who when we did our tax credits, they outshined us very quickly. But what you have done now will help us catch up. And I know that Assemblymember Zabrar is going to be taking the lead on this issue as we move through the budget process. So supporting the industry is very, very important to me and my administration. And we established the Industry Entertainment Council to draw on the expertise of industry leaders to act on reversing the trend of us losing our industry and to keep production local. So supporting our workforce, streamlining studio projects, and strategizing on policy that keeps production and jobs in Los Angeles. We're creating new studio and soundstage concierge services, which cuts red tape and provides direct assistance with city departments. The program has helped seven new studios and sound Sound stages, and in addition, 8.1 million square feet of soundstage, media production, and associated creative office space are in the pipeline within the city. We all need to join forces and make sure that we keep our signature industry. And just like we're going to do in the World Series, we have to make sure that we stay ahead of New York. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, and let me introduce Assemblymember Zabur. Thank you, Mayor Bass, for your incredible leadership over the decades on behalf of this industry, and I want to thank the bold leadership of our governor today. Um, you know, Hollywood is in crisis. Production in California is down dramatically, and we're facing an epidemic of unemployment and underemployment in California's signature iconic industry, an industry that until recently was responsible for over $42 billion in wages and over 800,000 direct, indirect, and induced jobs across the state of California. As the assembly member representing Hollywood and the ground on which we're standing today, I can tell you firsthand that increasing the film tax credit is critical to keeping Hollywood in California. Because of the enormous benefits this industry provides for our workers and small businesses, other states like Georgia, New York, Massachusetts, New Mexico, and other countries like Canada and the UK have adopted tax credit and incentive programs that dwarf California's, and they've been successful in luring our jobs away. Next time you watch a film or series at a theater or on your favorite streaming platform, pay attention to the number of productions that display that Georgia's peach. Every time that comes up, my heart breaks, frankly, because that represents thousands of jobs that are leaving California and that are now filmed outside of California. Significantly increasing our film tax credit to keep California competitive is one of my top priorities, and as you can see, is one of Governor Newsom's as well. Doing so is crucial to protecting hundreds of thousands of California families' jobs and opportunities for small businesses. I'm delighted here today to support the bold and decisive leadership of Governor Newsom, who understands the importance of taking real substan substantial action for California families. Thank you, Governor, for stand always standing boldly on the side of the health of California families and workers, and, um, and I'm very grateful, and my constituents are very grateful for what you're doing today. With that, I have the great pleasure of um, introducing someone who's been a leader in this space for many decades, uh, Senator Anthony Portentino. Thank you, Assemblymember Zuber. This is exciting, isn't it? Yeah. This is exciting. I want to give a big shout out to Mayor Bass because the first tax credit happened under her leadership as speaker, and that set the mark and set a priority. Obviously, I want to give a shout out to my colleague, Ben Allen, who's here is every time. Let's give it up for Ben Allen. And 
this is inside baseball. Every time there's an article in the LA Times that has, that doesn't say we're doing enough, Ben texts it to me and says, "We got to do more. We got to do more." And so he is a champion for this issue. We also have Assembly Member Sharon Quirk Silva, who's here with us as well. So I want to give her a shout out. This tall guy over here, we got to give him big props too. That's you. Let's give it up for the governor who brought us all out. And all of the trades people and actors and talent behind us, let's give a big round of applause because they're the driving force behind all of this. I'm Senator Anthony Portentino. I get to represent Glendale, Burbank, Pasadena, long, rich film towns, and it's just an honor to represent them. I'm also the father of a daughter who's worked in Georgia, who's worked in Germany, who's now working on a project shooting in Vancouver. I'd much rather have her home on a Sunday night in my house than traveling around the world making projects that should be shot here. She's probably happy she's not at my house, but that's a whole different issue. But that's the point. As Assemblymember Zuber said, so many of our constituents come up to us every single day and say the state needs to do more. The state, you know, we're, 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 we're starving in essence. Uh, everybody thought post-pandemic, post-strike, we'd be back. Well, it's a struggle. And the mayor has taken the leadership and the governor has taken the leadership. And it's important to know that this isn't just new to Governor Newsom. When the program was under or over-prescribed, we put $180 million in the budget to cover that shortfall. That didn't just happen without the support of the governor. When we needed a tax credit to build more sound stages, the governor stepped up and made that happen. When the program needed to be extended during tough budget times, the governor put a five-year extension in the budget. Understand that there are people in California that don't get it, that don't believe this is a worthwhile investment. They don't understand this core industry. Governor Newsom does. And that's why it's exciting to be here today to see his continued leadership by proposing this ahead of the budget discussion because the budget document is a priority document. It says, what does California prioritize with our resources? And investing in this industry, investing in these jobs, and I'm so glad we had a costume designer here to talk about those thrift shops because many of them are Magnolia Boulevard in my district. <laughs> and when I go thrift shopping with my daughter, the first thing they say is, we're not doing as well as we did 10 years ago. We're struggling because of the lack of production. So it does ripple down like the mayor said, like we heard from Brigitte. It affects everyday people, not just the talent. And so that's why it's exciting for me to be here, to share in this continued effort that started with the mayor, is continuing with the governor, to help people have jobs and put food on their table. So it's my honor, my privilege, to introduce the person who brought us all here today, who is stepping up and prioritizing film and TV entertainment in California and all of those union jobs that it re represents and all of those tangential businesses. Please give it up for Governor Gavin Newsom. Thank you, Senator. You're getting really good at this. I, uh, uh, all of you, thank you for taking the time to be out here. I know we, we put this together in pretty short notice, but we wanted to uh, really uh, put our, well, we wanted to assert ourselves and, and to begin to reconcile the stress that has been building up here uh, for, frankly, the larger part of a decade plus. Uh, there's been this trend line for years and years that predates the pandemic, predates some of the labor issues. Uh, that's now a headline, a screaming headline. Uh, there's not a week, it seems, that goes by where uh, someone is not presenting to me, not just a text from Ben Allen, but uh, a, a headline uh, from one of the trades or from any independent economic analysis, including just recently UCLA's own economic forecast in the state of California uh, that doesn't reinforce the crises, a legitimate crisis. Uh, here as it relates to the entertainment industry, the film industry in our state. And so we have a state of mind uh, to address this issue a little bit more forcefully. I want to point out uh, that or reinforce that what the senator was saying is important. Um, just a year ago, 
we were debating this issue a year ago. We uh, addressed some of the concerns as it relates to the existing program, uh, the 3.0 version as we refer to it, and some refundability issues. We looked at the criteria of consideration as it relates to making sure we represent our values. When we talk about labor and workforce, we wanted to make sure that was codified in terms of the existing program. We wanted to extend it to create some more certainty, as the senator said, for an additional five years. It was due to expire in 2025. And we wanted to build on the work we did a prior uh, few years before, and that was a one-time appropriation of about $150 million to address some of the soundstage issues and the like. But we recognized that, uh, frankly, we were playing in the margins and that we needed to be big and bold. Uh, and there was some conversation around, well, maybe we can just true it up to 400 million from 330 million, didn't feel right. Um, we needed to make a statement and we need to do something that was meaningful, uh, not just intentional. Uh, and so we put this new marker out, uh, $750 million, $330 million to $750 million. And and, and that puts us, you, you guys really do hate New York, don't you, down here? I, uh, but it, de it definitely puts us, Mayor, uh, above New York. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, acknowledging, you know, that peach, I don't know how they can continue to afford that program, but we'll see, we'll see how long that, that lasts down in Georgia. But, but I will say, compare the values of this state to the values as it relates to workers and women's rights, LGBTQ rights, civil rights, voting rights down in the state of Georgia. I think it's a pretty damn easy, easy decision. For those that make these decisions, I hope that's, you know, you know, if you believe in those values, I hope you can express them um, by moving your feet, not just praying, as they say, uh, not just talking about them, uh, but actually coming back to the state of California. And I hope this um, uh, creates a little bit of, you know, anxiety for the people in Florida, uh, or rather Georgia, and a little bit of anxiety uh, for those other states, but I hope it also uh, creates a different conversation uh, with those, again, folks that make these decisions. So we're grateful uh, for this opportunity. We're grateful because uh, this state is back on track. Uh, Record-breaking tourist numbers last year, population in the state is growing. You saw first time in over a decade more Fortune 500 companies in the state of California than any other state in the nation. That's the first time since 2014. The state is back more resilient than ever. Uh, and that includes, you may have seen some of the finance numbers. Um, that revenue is back up. Uh, we're going to be projecting, well, I want to get in of my January budget, but we're in a position we can afford this, uh, and, uh, and, and we need to do this. This is about jobs, this is about uh, investment, and it's about recognizing and closing um, that the world we invented is now competing against us. Yep. You know, 38 states, it's not just New York, it's not just Georgia. And there's an old saying, it, 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 you know, if you want to do well in the future, you got to invest in the future. Uh, and so this is about investing the future of this industry, the future of the state, the values we hold dear, uh, investing our creativity, this great cultural export, uh, and investing in the men and women in closing uh, you see behind me. And I really appreciate putting the human face on this. I know there's, you know, sometimes people think this is just about all these superstars and somehow subsidizing uh, uh, folks that are, that are well healed or well off. Quite the contrary. This is about working folks. This is about building a sense of community. I, I love, in this context, it's about, you know, Main Street as well. Uh, it's about these small business businesses that uh, benefit from uh, this kind of investment and this kind of activity. Uh, and it's about pride. You know, it is about pride. You look at the tourist numbers, and we do a survey every single year. Four out of 10 people have never been to California in the last survey said they came to California because they saw it on screen. Um, and that's a point of pride. It's, you know, that's important. So, you know, this is also about brand California. So to all of you, to, to Colleen and my team, thank you to the Film Commission. She's been, uh, uh, the day we got sworn in, she said, I need to talk to you about the film tax credit. Uh, we're finally here, Colleen. And uh, to Dee Dee Myers, who's been at this, uh, the head of our, our Go Biz, our business development. Thank you, Dee Dee, for all your hard work on this. Uh, 
to Senator Portentino again. He's, he's the OG of this. Uh, but of course, you, you got a mayor, a former speaker, that uh, really lit things up in 2000. I think it was nine when you guys did that first tax credit, and we're building on your legacy and your work. And to our champion since the day he got sworn in, Rick Zabur, uh, the assembly member who will be carrying this torch, and these are my final words. This is a proposal, and we're gonna need all your help. We're gonna need your support. Uh, we've, we've got some remarkable legislative leaders here. Uh, but we're going to need that support to get this over the line. And so I want to thank you, uh, Rick, for your support of this effort, but in anticipation and expectation, all of your support uh, to get this over the line in our January budget. With that, we thank everybody. We're going to take a quick photo, and then we'll go around and ask some questions. Thank you all very much for being here. You've been listening to Governor Gavin Newsom detail his plan to help increase TV and film production here in Los Angeles. We'll have more details on his proposal starting at KCAL News at 6 and here on CBS News Los Angeles. Have a great day.